All right, guys, now here we are my personal setup. So you wanted to improve the performance on your i7 11700 or 11700F? Well, let's get straight into the BIOS and let's get into it. You can already kind of see what's going on that's different, but no spoilers, let's get into it. Okay, now here we are. So basically there's a way to essentially increase the performance slash overclock this i7, those locked i7 on the 11th and 10th gen. This also works on the 11, 10, 700 and 10, 700 F. Anyway, what we want to do is remove the power limitations. If you remove them, they will run essentially like an i7 11, 700 K in my case. Now you will probably have no chance overclocking the RAM over 3200 megahertz, even though your XMP is higher. Um, don't waste time with that. They are really, really binned on the IMC, but anyway. The first thing we want to do is undervolt it. Now, how to do it? Fairly simple. You just go on the um, tweaker on your motherboard and you just go um, basically on the CPU V core and you just set a dynamic V core. Now, depending on the motherboard, um, you will have to set it different, but basically on the CPU V core, you will probably say offset. You choose offset and then you just uh, hit minus 0 0.050 and this will be stable 100 percent um if you don't want to test it if you want to test it you can try uh, minus 0 0.075 and see if it's stable that could work on some cpus if you're very very lucky you could get 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 Try it out. This will lower the performance and the power consumption. At this point, what we want to do is basically unlock all the power limits that are on the motherboard. So depending on uh, the motherboard, again, you will have to do it a bit differently. But here, you basically go on advanced CPU options, and then you will have something which is called uh, power limits, basically um, something very similar to this. And so you want to essentially just uh, hit all nines here and just, uh, you know, get the maximum possible uh, value for each one uh, as to unlock them instead of using them on auto. Because on auto, they will throttle down your CPU and you will actually, um, you know, lose performance over time. So we are basically overclocking how the CPU behaves after like 10 seconds. Because after 10 seconds, from 4.4, it would have dropped down to like 4 gigahertz. But now it's staying up at 4.4 flat the whole time. This is going to give you a pretty significant performance advantage in productivity and in games. Try it out. Uh, it's really something. And then if you want to be extra with it, you can also go on the C states. Now, I haven't done this on my CPU, but you can go on the C states and disable them. Um, if you disable the C states, the C states are basically um, different power states, okay? If you do that, you will essentially always run the CPU at full speed, okay? And by doing that, uh, you will not have it go down to save power, but you will always have the maximum responsive CPU, like the most responsive CPU possible. And that's about it. Now, depending on the motherboard, like I'm running a pretty good motherboard. Uh, it, it, it's a Z170 motherboard, even though it's an ITX one. If you have like a B550, this is gonna work, but it's gonna work the best on a good motherboard and you will need a good uh, cooler because th this is gonna increase the, the temperature and the power consumption. But that's why we did the undervolt. Because in this way, uh, we kind of compensated for the reduction. And so overall, it's basically the same. It's just slightly, slightly hotter. So yeah, try it out. Let me know what you think about it. And see you in the next one, guys. Bye.